Today's video is sponsored by ButcherBox. More on them later. I'm sharing easy weeknight dinners that are perfect for when you don't feel like cooking. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. So I have a what's for dinner video for you today and the theme for this video is easy dinners that you can make when you don't feel like cooking. Now these are also slightly gourmet dinners and all three recipes have a strong stamp of approval from my children, okay? So that's good to know. So today I'm going to be making beef broccoli ramen noodles, puff pastry salmon with cucumber sauce and pesto chicken bake. So let's get started. All of the recipes will be written in the description box below, or if my blog is ready by the time this video is up, they will be linked there as well. So make sure you check that out. All right, let's start off with the ramen beef noodles. Now this dish requires broccoli, and I have a little hack on how I cook the broccoli along with the noodles to save a few steps. So in a large pot of boiling water, I place my broccoli florets. And I do this just a few minutes before I add the ramen noodles because the ramen noodles will cook for three minutes and I want this, uh, like the broccoli to boil for about five to six minutes. So just put that in before your noodles and then I'm going to take two packages of ramen noodles, discard those flavoring packets. We're not using that in this recipe. You just want the noodles. So I'm going to put two of those in there and boil that up for three minutes or whatever your package instructions require. And then once it's boiled, I'm going to drain everything. So that's how I cook the broccoli along with the ramen, and I save myself a lot of hassle. Now I'm going to take my top sirloin steak, and this is from the butcher box, which I'll share with you later. And I cut this into little strips. And some people ask, why do I use gloves sometimes? It's because in this case, I just didn't feel like touching the raw meat. Okay, in my saute pan, I add some olive oil and then I cook the steak for a few minutes on each side, probably about two minutes, three minutes on each side until it's brown, but not tough. So I like to still keep it slightly rare in the center. Now I'm going to make the sauce, which is really easy. And you can improvise on this depending on what you have. So I start off with some soy sauce and I add soy sauce in. Some warm water. Brown sugar. Some chopped garlic. Then I add some cornstarch, which will thicken it up some ground ginger, but if you have fresh ginger, feel free to use that. And then I add some sesame oil and some hoisin sauce. Now, if you don't have hoisin sauce, for example, don't worry, you can still make the recipe. You could substitute for something else if you have a different similar sauce or just leave it out altogether, it's up to you. Okay, so now I whisk this together and I cook this on low heat and whisk it until it thickens just slightly. And then I add my beef back into the mixture and I top it with the ramen noodles and the broccoli. And that's it, it's so easy. noodles and the broccoli and the beef in with that delicious sauce and I put it in a large bowl and I top it with chopped green onions of course <laughs> and some toasted sesame seeds. And this dish is so delicious, so satisfying. I made this later at night, that's why the light is a bit low, and it was completely devoured. I almost thought maybe I could double it and you know, use four packets of noodles and, and double the beef, but this is a really delicious meal, 
and it takes no time at all to make. Next, I'm going to share the pesto chicken bake with you. Now, this is the easiest recipe out of all the recipes I'm sharing today. It's so easy and so delicious. Okay, I'm going to take my chicken breasts from the butcher box, and these are pretty substantial, so I only need three here and I add salt and pepper to them, and then I'm just going to sear them on my grill. This is not necessary. You can make this without browning them first, but I just like that kind of crispy browned texture on them. So I'm not cooking them all the way through. I'm just searing them on both sides. Then I place the chicken in the cooking dish that I sprayed with cooking spray. And on top of this, I add one jar of pesto. I just distribute it evenly on top of the chicken. I top this with mozzarella cheese. You get it sliced from your deli. And I top that with tomatoes. And I sprinkle a little salt and pepper on top. And that's it, <laughs> okay. So I bake that in the oven until the chicken is fully cooked, and this is what it looks like. In the last few minutes, I will put the chicken under the broiler just so it browns up a little bit, but don't forget it, you don't wanna burn the cheese. And this is it. I'm serving it here with some mashed potatoes, and I drizzle some of that pesto sauce on top of the chicken. This is so good. Even the tomatoes themselves soaking up that pesto sauce. It's really delicious and so easy to make and actually quite impressive too. So if you have last minute guests, this is a great meal to serve them. I'm going to break away for one minute to tell you about Butcher Box, who have kindly sponsored today's video. So Butcher Box ship to your door the highest quality meat and seafood, and all the meat that I'm using in this video is from the Butcher Box. Butcher Box not only provide high quality meat, but they also provide value. Their least expensive box option can make up to 24 meals. That's a home cooked meal with your family every weeknight for an entire month and then some. ButcherBox saves you time by delivering straight to your door. They deliver the highest quality meat through thoughtful sourcing. I always choose the custom box because I like to select what I personally will need based on the recipes I know I'm going to cook. So here's what I chose for my box this month. I chose beef patties, Alaska sockeye salmon, ground turkey, ground beef, applewood smoked bacon, organic chicken breasts, top sirloin steaks that I used in the ramen recipe, and pork tenderloin. Once you're a part of the Butcher Box community, the benefits keep on. You have access to special member deals and add-ons for each box. And when it comes to Butcher Box, the most important piece of the value equation for me is the peace of mind I get from knowing I'm feeding my family high quality meat that I can trust. So click on the link below to claim this month's Butcher Box limited offer plus free shipping. And thank you to Butcher Box for sponsoring today's video. And finally, let's look at the salmon puff pastry with cucumber sauce recipe. Now this recipe is very easy to make. It's so delicious, slightly gourmet. It's impressive and my children love it. Even my picky eater, <laughs> okay? The day that I made this, not only did he eat the whole thing, but that evening he told me that he wanted me to make it again the next day. So this recipe is a keeper. So I start off by taking some puff pastry and I roll that out onto a floured surface and just make it slightly bigger. Now, when I wanted to shoot this recipe, my local grocery store was out of puff pastry, so I only had one sheet in the freezer, and so I'm making a smaller version here just to show you the recipe. But normally I would have two sheets of puff pastry to make four of these because you can split them, especially with the kids. Then I take my salmon fillets and I've sprinkled salt and pepper on them, and then I cut around them with a little rectangle of puff pastry. And I'm going to take one egg and use that as an egg wash. So I beat that together. I decided to flip the salmon over because the seam side is going to be on the bottom. Now, if you don't like the salmon skin, you can take that off, but I like salmon skin, so I kept it on. So I brush the edges of the puff pastry with the egg wash, and then I wrap them up like a little parcel. Then you place this seam side down in a greased baking sheet. 
Make sure you brush the top of the salmon parcels with egg wash so that they brown nicely. And you're going to cook them at 400 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes, depending on how much salmon you have. And now I'm going to make the cucumber sauce that goes with it. So normally when I do my salmon wellington, I'll put cream spinach in the parcel with the salmon wrapped in puff pastry. But this is a different way to do it. This is better for spring summer because it has a very light texture to it, this sauce. It's not as heavy as cream spinach. So I'm going to take one cucumber and shred it up and I take some fresh dill and chop that up as well. And I place that in a bowl and mix it along with half a cup of mayonnaise and half a cup of sour cream. some salt and mix it all together and that's it. It's a very delicious, creamy, cucumbery sauce. It has afternoon tea flavors to it. Okay, this is what the salmon looks like when it comes out of the oven. They just look so good. And I place this on my dish and I'm just serving it with a simple sunflower chopped salad on the side and then a nice dollop of the cucumber sauce. Here I open it up and show you the inside and what it looks like. So if your children are picky eaters or maybe they don't like fish, try giving them this recipe because they might change their mind. It's really good. I hope you enjoyed today's video and that it gave you meal inspiration on what to make for your family when you just don't feel like cooking. Thank you so much to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to click the link below and you get to claim this month's ButcherBox limited offer plus free shipping. Thank you for joining us today. Keep calm and remain classy and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye. Thank you.